Hello, one and all, it's your Doc Stone, Chapter 206, Dawn of the Computer. And I've got to say, I really, really love the explanation Sanku gives here on how computers actually work. They are just a series of ones and zeros, on and off switches. And, you know, they start really simple, and you can extrapolate from there. Zero, zero, one is one, one, zero is two, one, one is three, one, zero, zero is four, one, zero, one is five, one, one, zero, six, one, one, one is seven, one, zero, 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 zero is eight, one, zero, 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 zero is sixteen, and on and on and on. Basically, if you add a zero to the right end of a binary number, it doubles its value. Huzzah! And there are also codes to recognize letters and colors and bits of music and all that other fun stuff. And in order for the computer to recognize these long strings of ones and zeros as anything useful, it uses logic gates. We see two examples in this chapter. Suka is the exclusive or logic gate, and Kohaku is the and logic gate. And for the sake of making this a little bit simpler to explain, I'm going to use true instead of one and false instead of zero. Now, the exclusive or logic gate is basically, as it says, exclusive. It only returns true when one of the values is true. For example, imagine the waiter asking if you want soup or salad. You have to choose. You can either raise the soup flag or the salad flag. You can't raise both flags and you can't raise neither flag. You have to pick either soup or salad. That's how the exclusive or gate works. It only returns true if exactly one of the values it's looking at is true. And then Kawaku is the and logic gate. She only returns true if both the values she's looking at are true. So, for example, imagine someone said, are you married and a doctor? You would only say yes if you were both married and a doctor. You'd say no if you were an unmarried doctor or if you were a married non-doctor. Huzzah! You now know everything you need to build a computer. Although you also need a parametron, which... Not gonna lie, I have never actually heard about this. I looked it up online. Apparently it was only used in Japan for like a decade, and that was it. So, yeah, no surprise there, no surprise there. Uh, but Sanku was able to build one of these very, very easily, and thanks to that, he's able to actually build a mini calculator, one that can at least calculate up to two, which, you know, is basically how computers work. If you put two of these devices together, you can add up to four. If you put four of these devices together, you can add up to eight, and so on, and so on, and so forth, all the way up to building a computer. And Sanku's estimate of needing 200,000 of these parametrons to actually build a working computer, a working NES... That, that sounds about right. That actually sounds about right. I mean, there are just so, so many calculations done. And, you know, it took Senku five of them just to add up to two. So that's just going to get more and more expensive as they keep, you know, making it more and more complicated. And honestly, I'm a bit surprised Senku only needed 200,000 of these things to actually make an NES work. But uh, very, very curious to see what happens with all that. But anyway, back to the, start of the chapter. I freaking love this color page we got. You know, half the team's out in the ocean having fun, enjoying their time here, while the other half is busy trying to build a computer. <laughs> oh, you know, they're both having fun. They're both having fun their own way. And I do love that we get a color page of Psy. You can actually see his hands for the first time. I mean, I assume the crack scars are more black, but his hands look brown, like a brownish red instead. It's very, very cool design. Very excited to see him in the anime eventually, season four or five, you know, whenever that happens. And while they're off doing the rest of that, Taiji and the team finally get back to Corn City. Huzzah! In a very Xeno-ish style boat. I mean, seriously, this thing is covered in spikes. It's actually, it's a Xeno design. Xeno's logo on the side of it. <laughs> oh, Xeno, I freaking love you. I freaking love you. And, you know, then finally, finally, once again, Taiju reunites with Yuzu, and they hug! Oh my freaking god, they hug! I mean, seriously, the series started off with Taiju trying to confess his love to Yuzu, and now, 206 chapters later, we're finally, finally getting a hug. By this point, he'll be willing to hold her hand by chapter 500. <laughs> he'll go in for a kiss by chapter 1000. And by chapter 1 million, they'll finally be married. Huzzah! Oh, you are really going slow, my friend. You are really going slow. Though, on the other hand, Yuzu does seem to get a bit more daring with Taiju every time he revives her, so, you know, maybe they can make another Medusa, petrify her a few more times, Taiju can revive her again and again, and then they can get married. Huzzah! Also, everybody's naked. Why is everybody naked? It's only been, what, like, eight years? Would clothes really degrade that quickly to the point where they're, you know, not even rags anymore? They've just completely fallen off the body? I'm not sure about that. Though I do love this just aged look we get of Zeno's castle as the grass is starting to overcome it. <laughs> oh, it's such a nice little detail. I freaking love it. And Joel seems okay. He, he seems rather okay, despite the fact that his arm was, you know, basically crushed by Brody, crushed into a giant steel vault. I mean, at least, like, four inches of metal crushed his arm to the point where it would have been, you know, basically reduced to dust, and now he's okay. 
And I'm definitely seeing a lot of debate about this online, because, you know, Medusa can more or less cure anything, can reattach lost limbs, can heal brain damage, all that fun stuff. But his arm was just completely and utterly crushed, reduced to, you know, literally dust. So having it fixed, having it cured that easily, and he seems to be okay. I mean, if he had some, you know, hand damage moving forward, that would make a lot of sense, but he's actually fine now. Medusa really is a miracle worker, and it really makes me think that Medusa might work beyond our typical understandings of physics and actually be a true time machine, actually be capable of, you know, moving a person's body backwards in time to the point where they're not hurt anymore, where they're not damaged anymore. Otherwise, I really don't know how this could physically be explained, how his arm could be cured in such a manner like that. That goes beyond, you know, just the natural healing process, accelerating the natural healing process and become something that is literally a miracle. Funny way, then they also decide to wake up Brody and his whole team, which, you know, feels like an interesting choice. I feel like, you know, you wake up Brody first, you explain the story to him, and then you have Brody explain the story to everyone else. I mean, I mean, Luna gives her explanation about how they're teaming up to fight a giant evil monster on the moon, but... I'm not really sure how well the explanation comes across. I mean, it definitely feels like Zeno's, you know, handwritten message is much, much more important to explain to Brody why it is they need to team up. And I just love the absolute look of shock on all their faces when Senko announces he's building a new computer. I mean, Joel, I mean, Joel is, looks terrified. He looks utterly, utterly terrified. But Brody, he, he actually looks excited. He looks really excited to be involved in this, actually get a computer at his hands again. Oh, Brody's really an engineer, and he's just so excited about the prospect of this job. And I do just love it when Senku's trying to explain computers to them with the flags. They all have such a different reaction on their faces as they're working on this. I mean, Jen looks honestly a bit embarrassed. Suka is so happy, and Kohaku is more serious than ever seen in her entire life. Seriously, she was less serious when she was fighting Stanley. <laughs> oh, she does not want to mess this up. She does not want to mess this up. And then we have the Parametron, which, like I said, I've never heard before. Though, from what I've seen people saying online, uh, the one Senko built won't actually work because it's not ferromagnetic, which, yeah, that sounds like a word. That sounds like a real word, I think. But given the fact they're building a computer from scratch by hand, I'm definitely, definitely willing to let that one slide. And then we get to see the diagram for the actual computer, and it's pretty interesting, pretty interesting. And we have the outer circuit where we saw that there's a mini calculator Senko built this chapter, which, you know, literally brought Sai to tears. <laughs> oh, I love that, I love that. Which is made of copper, zinc, and wire-resistant condensers. Uh, then we need a display, which is this argon gas and glass. We've seen that before with the radar they built. And then there's the computer's memory, which is basically just a ferrite magnet made out of rusted iron and magnesium, which makes a certain amount of sense. I know you can, you know, basically write memory using magnet somehow. I don't know the specifics of it, but I know it can actually work. The memory cartridges are going to be programmed by Psy, the resident programmer, and that's going to contain the actual data that needs to be run by the computer. The parametrons themselves can be built by a factory, which definitely come back to in a second. But there's also going to be apparently a power plant, a power factory, which is going to power the NES to allow them to build a parametron supercomputer. So curious, very, very curious. I mean, the fact they show this is an actual power plant rather than just saying, oh, water wheel, stuff like that, makes me think they're going to actually build some new way of harnessing electricity, some new way of, you know, generating enough electricity to actually power, you know, a freaking supercomputer. But as for actually building 200 freaking thousand parametrons, which again, seems like a very, very low number for what this thing actually needs to do, they're going to need to, you know, use both automation and manual labor. Apparently Senku's going to build a factory that can make the metal donuts, so bringing us into the age of automation. But as for coiling the wire, apparently that can't be done by a machine, and instead user needs to do it 200,000 times. I mean, Senko tells them to revive a bunch of people so they can, you know, make the work a bit easier, but that's still 200,000 wires they need to coil. That's going to take a very long time and be a bunch of work, but of course, Yuzu's up for it, and honestly, Brody looks really happy. Brody looks really excited and happy for this prospect. Oh, I'm so excited to see what Brody does this next arc. I'm so, so excited for that. I mean, they definitely felt like they were trying to humanize him a bit more in the last arc after he murdered a bunch of teenagers. You know, he shed a single tear. It looks like he was going in for the Medusa, maybe to petrify them, maybe to save their lives. So I definitely think he's more a good guy than Stanley would be right now. Very, very curious about that. Also, another thing I'm curious about, uh, Yuzu and the rest of them in Corn City are going to coil the wire... But Senku is quite literally on the other side of the planet from them, so... Yeah, how's that gonna work? I mean, are they gonna meet, like, back up in Japan? You know, she's gonna bring all the coiled wires, Senku's gonna bring all the metal donuts, and they're gonna, you know, put it together there? But then they still need to actually assemble the 200,000 parametrons. They need to attach the coiled wire to the metal donut, so... That's gonna require a lot of people, a lot, a lot of people, and... 
and there aren't really that many people back in Japan right now, so they need to wake up just a whole bunch of people and basically, you know, restart society there as well, which would take a lot of time, so... Yeah, I'm not really sure what the game plan is with these parametrons. I mean, I'm guessing the indie arc, at least right now, is we focus on actually, you know, getting the display, the computer memory, the ROM cartridges, uh, and power to basically, you know, make all this. And they're going to meet back up in Japan, Australia, uh, Papua New Guinea, wherever the next city is going to be. But I'm not sure. I'm really not sure about that. Uh, I'll link all down below, which is an explanation on how computers work. Uh, what exactly is the timeline here? How long does it actually take them to build 200,000 parametrons? Or at least build 20,000 cord wires, metal donuts to put them together. To where are they going to reunite? Where are they going to team up to actually make a computer? And oh god, just above even you know putting together 20,000 parametrons, actually you know assembling them together to form a real functioning computer is a headache I can't even begin to imagine. Seriously, I have a master's degree in pure science. I understood this chapter fairly well, but putting together 20,000 parametrons to actually form a supercomputer just it's beyond me. It is utterly and completely beyond me by every stretch of the imagination. But let me think all this down below. Be sure to like, subscribe to the next video. And until then, peace!